are sitting behind, come closer to the podium or come closer to these senior, very powerful, good comrades. Please, before we start, na waomba, tusongembele tu kidogo. I'll wait for you until you come so that we start. DJ, tupatia tu wimbo wakikuja. Anyone sitting behind Ombok, please? That is the last line. Yes. Kujambele. Then I will ask us all to be upstanding so that we officially start this good session with our national anthem. Let's all stand up for the national anthem. Some of us are still sitting. Okay, DJ. Thank you very much. Don't sit. I want to welcome the Social Justice Traveling Theater to help us with the Wimbo wa Mapambano. Karibuni. Viva Comrades Viva! Viva Comrades Viva! Bado amko powerful. Viva Comrades Viva! Are you here to be happy or happy to be here? Which one? Are you here to be happy or happy to be here? Both of them, eh? Very good. Saidiane kuweka mkono wetu ya left pande hii. Kupigwa na kupokonywa maisha. Hakutatuzuia sisi wananchi. Kunyakuwa uhuru wetu na haki. Jashole tu na haki ya jashole tu Tumekata kupiga magoti Mbele ya hawa wa uwadi Bila shaka sisi pia ni watu Hali ya utu mwatu mei Kata kata hali ya utu mwatu meikata Tutanyaku wa mashamba yetu Tupigani ye uhuru wetu Tuikombo we elimu yetu Utamadu ni na viwanda to combo we utamadu ni na viwanda vietu Sisi hatu taki kudhulumi wa Hatu taki tena mauadi Hili kupetuli yangushe Hakina uhuru zichanue Na uhuru wetu Wakenya, wakenya Uhuru wetu Wakenya, tupiganie Na wamama wetu Wakenya, wakenya Wamama wetu Wakenya, tuwatetee Na katiba yetu Tuwakenya, tutekeleze 
na watetezi wetu wakenya wakenya watetezi we tu wakenya tu ole yo Let's take our seats and let's clap for the traveling theater. Uh, I believe that all of us know why we are here. We are all here to basically celebrate a journey of one decade. The Peace Brigade International, uh, an organization that has worked with most of us, all of us, and many of us that are also not here, is celebrating it's 10 plus years in Kenya. And we saw it twice that we celebrate together and bring to the fore the voices of those human rights defenders that are working on ground to continue to push for a social, just community in Kenya. Before we go further, I want to take this chance to welcome the Peace Brigade International Kenya Country Director, Mr. Albert Fiat. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes to welcome us officially to this event. Tumpigia makofi vizuri. Sante sana, Javan. Ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests, comrades, and friends, welcome to this uh, anniversary. Comrades, today we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of our journey, a journey that uh, we have made together, a journey to advance equality and justice, a journey of courage, a journey of which you all are the protagonist, because exposing inequality, corruption, Violence requires courage. Standing against intimidation and violence requires courage. Marching against tear gases to exercise our constitutional right requires courage. Making changes requires courage. 10 years may not be seen as a long time, but looking up, back, we have uh, plenty of memories. Moment of struggle and moment of joy. Bonding experiences and time for learning together and supporting each other. PBI has reason to be satisfied and proud of having been part of the journey. Back in 2013, PBI had the opportunity to witness and support the creation of the social justice centers of Madare, I can see quite a number of people here from Madare, and Andorra as well, which uh, inspired many other HRDs to follow the example and create uh, their own social justice center, which I believe contributed to growing of a more united, better structured and coordinated and stronger movement. A movement that PBI has supported and intend to support in future with capacity building, advocacy, psychosocial support, and other needs that will emerge and will identify together as uh, it is in our normal practice. In the last 10 years, particular attention has been given to countering gender-based violence, which has been the mission of our brother and sisters, which are here with us, I'm talking about the women human rights defenders we have been working with since 2016 and uh, whose journey is documented in the beautiful photo book that you received uh, at uh, the registration point. The action of every day make the differences. It may not appear in the news, but we know that each and every one of you is a hero. The dedication, passion, commitment that you have demonstrated throughout the years has been inspiring to me and to all our team and our supporters as well. You have been fighting stereotypes and impunity. You have denounced perpetrators, not without risk involved, 
and you have helped victims to find comfort and, when possible, justice. That has been a bit more challenging, but I think we are on the right way. You have uh, campaigned for a better Kenya, and some of you had the chance to travel abroad to make others aware of what the situation in Kenya is and what the challenges we are facing are. You have gained credibility and respect within your own communities, including among traditional and institutional leaders, and you are spearheading and promote human rights action for the best of the country. PBI, uh, just to mention, is also part of the Missing Voices Coalition, which is an important initiative in uh, investigating and documenting and force disappearances and extrajudicial killing, and is also a member of the Police Reform Working Group that aims at improving the National Police Service, professionalism, accountability, and also well-being. All this journey, these 10 years, journey would have not been possible without necessary resources. Therefore, I want to thank all our supporters, and particularly the German Embassy in Kenya and the German government for their continuous attention and support to actions aiming at advancing human rights in Kenya. Last but not certainly least, I want to recognize the value of teamwork. I wish to thank the board of director of PBI for their continuous support, advice, and guidance, and PBI staff, which makes a fantastic team, always on the front line in making sure that our action provides genuine and real benefit. They are consistently in dialogue and in action with our partners. They consult, decide, and implement together and move forward hand in hand, which I believe it is a fundamental recipe for success. And to conclude, I would like to invite all PBI team on the stage for a brief introduction of each and every one. Please. Is everybody around or are people busy with the registration still? Great. Karibuni sana. Thank you very much. So I think we start from the end and then we pass the microphone. Hello, good evening. My name is Immaculate Akello. I'm the communications officer at PBI Kenya. Karibuni. Hello. Hi. My name is Martha McKenna. I do finances. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Florence Moikali, project officer, toolkit. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anne Nyakea, admin and logistics. Karibuni sana. Avarizenu. My name is Veri Srausma. I do programs. Viva comrades. Viva. My name is Zivik, ah, sorry. My name is Bernard Gashia. I a project officer in charge of the Zivik. Oh. <laughs> in charge of Zivik project. Thank you. Asante Nisana, as you can see we have been paying attention to gender balance to the point that we went overboard. <laughs> Asante Nisana and uh, where is our friend Java now? I can hand over the microphone, I think. Yes. Thank you, Javan. Let's give them a hearty clap again. Is that not a powerful and beautiful team? Mumeona? Mumeona? Wanaweza ama wawezi? Oh, umesikia hiyo? Let's celebrate them again. Basically, that is the team that uh, we work with, or rather runs the day-to-day -day work of PBI. 
But I want to remind you, as we celebrate uh, this decade, I know most of us are very, very uh, available and active on our social media platforms. Please remember to document this day because we've learned that we also must document our own st uh, history and stories. Viva Comrades Viva. And the hashtag is, you can see it. Nani anaona? No, no, no. Sema nanguvu. Hashtag decade of courage. Hashtag please document this because 10 years later we will look back at how far we've come, how much we've done, and of course how much we've achieved. Because again, I believe 10 years ago it was not as it is today. We are not in the best place we want to be, but that journey has brought us somewhere. Viva comrades, viva! Viva comrades, viva! I want to also take this chance to recognize organizations in the house, and I will be calling them by name, and you at least clap for them. We have Amnesty International in the house. We have GIZ in the house. We have the Social Justice Traveling Theater in the house. We have CGHRD in the house. Don't be selfish with your clubs. Tafadhali. We have Missing Voices in the house. And basically, we are all part of Missing Voices. Sindio, viva comrades, viva. We have uh, the Social Justice Center's working group in the house. We have Mothers of Victims in the house. And I will continue to call them as we go on. I want to take this chance to welcome uh, Akelo. I know you're ready, eh? Uh, so there's a, a very short documentary of the journey that we've had so far that will also be presented or represented in the toolkit and also with some stories that we will share. So Akelo, uh, this is your time. Tumpigie Makofi.
jackets and following people everywhere in the community was not working for us because it became the insecurity for the HRD. So for us, we explored other ways and some of those ways are skills, building their knowledge, but also building a formidable network and movement around HRDs. So the the solidarity PBI added to the existing na national and international human rights organizations and fraternities uh, just by presence was a big deal. In the last decade, PBI Kenya has hit milestones in promoting the protection of human rights defenders through advocacy, capacity building and networking. Seeing that PBI and other partners were there collectively to work together and convene to support me, uh, it really inspired me not to give up. Uh, we are dealing with uh, gender-based violence and uh, we are currently also trying to close the gap which is that between uh, police and communities. Through the human rights defenders, we are the principal actor and uh, linking uh, elements between the community and the police. It's working pretty well, I would to say. Um, we are also looking ahead, uh, thinking of uh, possibly expanding. There is uh, inequality, there is corruption, there is uh, injustice, there is uh, violence and uh, the, one of the elements that, as I said, we are dealing with is uh, women human rights defenders. We are trying to enforce women human rights defenders to tackle the issue of gender-based violence. We are also providing psychosocial support to human rights defenders. They are living in difficult situations, difficult contests, and uh, quite often they are going through experiences which may be very traumatic. As PBI looks towards the future, we hope to leave a legacy of courage and commitment to the promotion of human rights, access to justice and equality, thus inspiring the next generation of human rights defenders. I wish to welcome all of you to our anniversary. This is uh, not a celebration of PBI only, this is the celebration of all of us. Let's put our hands together again. Uh, I know as, uh, and maybe this goes to Immaculate, uh, this is just a snippet. There's so many other stories that have been documented of many other HRDs that we were just not able to showcase. So maybe we will be doing community screenings of our own stories. Viva comrades, viva. viva. If you've not seen yourself, Believe you me, the old documentary has your voice and the voice of the communities that you represent. Viva, comrades, viva. viva. Now, I want to take this chance to, of course, for every other organization, there is a board that helps to foresee, to guide, and also to give uh, direction to an organization. And to this particular time, I want to welcome the chair lady, or the chairman, or the chairperson, rather, that cuts across for PBI International. Let's put our hands together for Naomi Baraza. Let's put our hands together, Vizuri. Karibu. Thank you so much, uh, distinguished guests, comrades, and friends. As the PBI Kenya family, it makes us really proud and happy that you agreed to share with us this day. And to all of you uh, that have been part of this journey, thank you so much 
for finding time today to join us to make our day memorable. PBI Kenya is 10. We are so happy. It's been a long journey, figuratively and literally, 10 years. If there's a baby who was born 10 years ago, today that baby is in class five. So it's been a journey and a journey of courage. Uh, where did we begin? At one point, it was just a dream. But remember, dreams are valued. So this dream has brought us here today. We look at PBI in three major phases. The first phase is the dream phase. The time when PBI did not exist in Kenya. Uh, the time when uh, comrades and friends who worked at uh, Nonviolent Peace Force wrote to PBI International and said, it is time that we got a PBI Kenya in Africa, in Kenya. And before that was responded to, 2007 post-election violence happened. And that sent PBI thinking. In 2009, a human rights, just like you've seen in the documentary, a team was sent to Kenya to come and investigate human rights violations. Uh, fast forward 2011, an exploration mission of establishing PBI Kenya was sent to Kenya, uh, which was supported by a lot of human rights defenders. Uh, and then after the report went back, 2013, PBI Kenya office was established. Initially by one volunteer. She's not appeared in the documentary. She barely appears in many conversations. But you people will remember, those of you who were there, there was someone by the name Anne Wright, an elderly, very energetic woman from Britain who came and set up the PBI office. And three months later, four other volunteers joined. Our approach then work, was working through foreign volunteers and doing physical accompaniment. That was our dream phase. Then we go to 2016 when we got into our second phase. And our second phase, I call it the redefining moment. In the redefining moment, we had quite a number of experiences. We had low moments, almost not sure if we were able to continue. We had financial challenges. We legally were very uncertain and if we were going to survive in this country. Mandate-wise, uh, it was a reflection moment because physical accompaniment was not our thing here. Also, it is that very time that a beacon of hope emerged, and this beacon is the TO project in 2016. It's the same time that the PBI Kenya consolidated its governance structure. We registered around that period as a local NGO in 2018. And at that same period of redefining, we localized the PBI mandate for local relevance. Then we go to our third phase. I call this phase the takeoff phase. And the takeoff phase is 2020 to date. This is the time that we were able to embrace new approaches from volunteer to and accompaniment to empowerment and capacity building. We diversified and expanded our, finding, our funding base, expanded our team at the Secretariat, expanded our governance body, 
programming wise we expanded qualitatively and quantitatively and you will attest to this just by looking at our team but also looking at the kind of work they do on the ground uh, it's also around this same time this period uh, the takeoff period that we were able to move beyond Nairobi to Kilifi and our friends and comrades from Kilifi are here karibuni sana uh, it's th within this period also that we were able to adopt a beautiful five-year strategic plan that ran from 21 to 2025 that has two overarching strategies of for capacity building and linking and influencing uh, HRDs uh, through other places, spaces of influence. Uh, our strategic plan looked at very critical uh, areas for areas of uh, strategic focus, which is safety and security of HRDs, well-being of HRDs, networking and movement building. And uh, from Alberto's uh, speech, clearly you've heard, we are members of uh, we are we are members of uh, five uh, five networks, which include. Uh, uh, Missing Voices, the HRD Protection Network, Ma, uh, Mulika Wabakaji, and, uh, and uh, police, re police Reforms Working Group. It's still the same period. I mean, it's still within this networking and movement building that we've been able to support HRDs and women HRDs in 11 communities, six in Nairobi and five in Kilifi, namely Kibera, Madare, Mukuru, Langata, Kawangware, Kayole, Kibarani, Mnarani, Shela, Ganda, and Tezo. We have continued to link and expose HRDs to relevant individuals and institutions, institutions locally and abroad, internationally, and mainly through our popular activity known as speaker tours. We have also institutionalized and uh, enhanced our internal effectiveness, efficiency, and re resilience. So in our 10 years of existence, we have made definitely mistakes, enough of them, but with humility, we have drawn very valuable lessons. We have made friends who have become our strongest pillar throughout this journey pillars of strength, and as we continue uh, to navigate through the familiar and unfamiliar terrains, we wish to recognize and thank all of you friends who have uh, journeyed with us in the 10 years, and namely, I would want to recognize uh, these friends under the category of donors and development partners. We have Miserio, Zivic, CPS, Spanish State, Freiburg Solidar, Ford Foundation, the German Embassy, Swiss Embassy, for really believing in us and really supporting our work. We are here because of that trust and believe you, you put in us. And then we have this other category of friends called networks, the HRD Protection Network, Police Reform Working Group, Missing Voices, Mulika Wabakaji, thank you so much because you have taught us what it means to work with others. And you've taught us that uh, we might be international, but that does not mean that we know everything. It also doesn't mean that we can do everything on our own. We are so humbled that you are part of us. We also have our esteemed community partners, and I say this with nostalgia. Every time I mention community partners, I am from Korogosho, so every time I talk about community partners, I think about me. And so I talk about community partners with nostalgia. You have been amazing. You have been on the front line. You've put your lives on the line. We cannot celebrate you enough. Thank you so much for agreeing teach PBI what it means to work with community partners in all the 11 communities. And we are hoping that uh, we will go beyond. 
Our PBI sister offices uh, beyond Kenya, especially PBI UK, Brussels, Spanish, France, Germany, Swiss, we've been so grateful because they, we are the youngest, I guess, PBI in the movement. In the PBI movement, we are the baby in the block. And so these other sisters elsewhere have taught us what it means to be a PBI family. We are so grateful. And uh, before I finish, I would like to introduce my board team, an amazing group of courageous uh, human rights defenders. Uh, how, who is in the room? I can see Ombok over there. Ombok, do you want to just... Thank you so much. Ombok Otieno there. He's a renowned HRD, a crusader of active nonviolence, and founder, board member of PBI Kenya. Thank you so much, Ombok, for journeying with us for all these years. When Nonviolent Peace Force requested PBI to come to Kenya before 2007, it's basically Ombok who wrote that letter because Ombok sat in the Nonviolent Peace Force office that time. So Ombok is pre-PBI. Thank you so much, comrade. Uh, is Dixon in the room? Okay, Dixon is not here. We have Dixon. Uh, who is a uh, senior auditor with KPMG, but also the treasurer for, um, uh, for PBI Kenya, who's supposed to be here. We have Enrica. Is Enrica in the room? No, Enrica was also supposed to be in the room. She is the secretary. Enrica Odulo is a senior counsel, advocate of the High Court, but also founder, board member of PBI Kenya, and the secretary of PBI Kenya. We have others that are not Kenyan, non Kenyan board members. We have uh, Brandon, who all of you, or majority of you know. Brandon is, is here with us in spirit. Uh, let's clap for Brandon. Uh, we have Altea. Altea is our board member in Geneva. She couldn't make it to this uh, launch. This, this celebration, but she asked me to pass her, her best regards to all of us. A clap for Altia. And then we have Jacqueline. Jacqueline uh, joined the board two years ago, but before that she had been working with the International Secretariat of PBI, and she was uh, in the Secretariat, and when she left the Secretariat and left the organization, she came back as a board member of PBI, so she is so much into administrative uh, work, and uh, we are so glad to have Jacqueline uh, in absence. Jacqueline is British, she sits in London. A clap for Jacqueline. And then we have Alberto, right. Alberto is uh, an ex officio of the board. He sits in the board and uh, he whips us when we forget to become who we are supposed to be. And so he's been playing a very major role, a very critical role of just reminding us, you guys, you are here for a purpose. And thank you so much, Alberto. A clap for Alberto. <laughs> As, as I conclude, I'd like to say, oh, and my name is Naomi Baraza. I, I am a human rights defender. I am also a founder board member of PBI uh, Kenya, and I'm happy to be around. Uh, <laughs> Asante. So as I conclude, being among the youngest PBI office and the only one in Africa, we feel we have been tried and tested. We have passed the threshold. At 10, we are confident and determined. As we march into the next decade, we hope that all of you will be part of our next bold, our next bold journey of courage. Perhaps exploring beyond the Kenyan, Kenyan borders, maybe, to just expand the African territory as PBI Kenya. 
Asanteni sana sana and happy 10th birthday PBI Kenya. Jacqueline sent a message that uh, she said I read it out on her behalf. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a message. I was going to forget it. Uh, should have been very, very disappointed. So she said, I, I read this out to you. She couldn't be here. But uh, she says, uh, please extend my warmest congratulations to the PBI Kenya team, past and present, and especially those of you who have endured the entire experience. I am so deeply and continually e impressed with the resilience and commitment of the staff and volunteers of PBI Kenya. And I am enormously grateful for the many partners in the community who have embraced, encouraged, and shaped the work of PBI in Kenya. May you all enjoy this day and many more working together for the protection of human rights in Kenya. With courage and solidarity, Jacqueline Nightingale. Thank you. Let's celebrate Naomi again. Vizuri, to begin my coffee, Vizuri. We all know Naomi is Shuja, Sindio. Viva, comrades, viva. Long live community organizing, long live. I want to take this chance now to invite, as has been said by Naomi and also by the county director, Alberto, is that the German embassy is one of the key partners and supporters of uh, Peace Brigade International. And of course, we had invited the ambassador, but due to unavoidable circumstances, he could not make it. However, he is very, very ably uh, represented by the Duke Deputy Head of Mission and Head of the Economic Department, Mr. Alexander Fairley. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Alexander. Tumpige makofi akiza. Karibu sana. Good evening, everybody. It's a great pleasure and honor um, to be here today and um, celebrate a decade of courage um, with you. Um, it's fascinating um, to, to see you all and, and the variety of people that are here today um, is, is really a, a great joy. Um, Honorable Okia Omtata, uh, Senator of Busia County, uh, Mrs. Naomi Baraza, and um, Mr. Alberto Fate, and all the others. Um, you are the heroes and you are the ones um, I think uh, we, we celebrate today. You know, I have been in this country um, for nine months only, so probably I'm the youngest amongst you here in, in Kenya, not by age, but by citizen or residence here um, in Kenya. And most of the time I see the beautiful places, um, the rich and nice people and the beautiful people, and um, sometimes it's very healthy also to see the other side of a society, and every society has, has um, different facets and um, um, brighter sides and not so bright sides. Um, for instance, um, this morning I was in a children's home that is run by a very um, encouraging and, and, and very strong uh, ladies. Um, they care for sometimes babies uh, um, whose mothers are in prison. Um, they care for 
pregnant girls at the age of 12 um, that have already children or are just pregnant, um, who have been raped, who have been um, uh, kept under very dire um, um, situations, who have not had any education so far. And um, this is also, I think, one kind of uh, human rights um, defense um, that you can do. So that shows me that um, what you all do is, has a big variety of, of action and, and there are many different facets of um, human, uh, human rights defenders and I think that's good and I think the situation here in the country is very lively. You have the space, you can, you can do your work and, and um, it's very encouraging to see that you're all here. Um, we have been supporting PBI's work here in Kenya for many years now. We have seen that the PBI has been doing good work. But it also shows that need of support for human rights remains relevant until today. This is especially true when it comes to women's rights and women human rights defenders. I'm therefore very proud that today we are also celebrating the launch of the new women human rights defenders photo book. Because genuine equality has not yet been achieved in any country in the world. Kenya and Germany included. Gender equality makes society stronger and more resilient, strengthening the rights, the resources and the representation of women and girls is fundamental to economic growth and development in a country. This is why Germany is following a feminist foreign and development policy. Let me take a minute um, to explain briefly what this policy is all about. Feminist foreign and development policy offers ways of tackling the problems of discrimination and oppression. It is grounded in the conviction that all people enjoy the same rights and deserve the same freedoms and opportunities. It also rests on the understanding that societies are more peaceful and prosperous if all people are able to participate in political, social and economic life. It seeks to achieve gender equality worldwide and to guarantee that all people have equal representation in all areas of life and that everyone has equal access to resources. The German government is very strong in, these, uh, in, in, in this policy. Um, since we have um, our current government, um, which was installed um, two and a half years ago, um, embassies have to report every year what they do to promote uh, women and other uh, neglected um, parts of, of the society. Against this background, the embassy has supported many human rights projects in Kenya, including the excellent work PBI Kenya is doing. Let me single out the Women Human Rights Defenders Toolkit, which was developed by PBI and which provides human rights defenders with information and tools useful for improving their understanding on security and protection. The network of toolkit users has increased uh, the confidence and the professionalism of human rights defenders and improved their ability to engage with diverse actors. This proves that there is great need for continued collaboration and cooperation with all stakeholders involved. Only when we work committedly towards a common goal can we truly achieve development for all. I want to congratulate PBI again for their commitment and resilience over the 10 years of work in Kenya. But I also want to congratulate everybody else in this room today who has worked on defending human rights in Kenya. Civil society space is rapidly closing in many countries. But Kenya has a strong and resilient civil society, one that is well organized and comes with a powerful agenda of change. The strong civil society space in Kenya makes the country a hub 
and a role model in the region, defending and further expanding the, the resilient Kenyan civil society is therefore of strong importance. PBI is a very active and important member of the civil society and human rights defenders network in Kenya. You advocate against corruption and for democratic institutions, for safe spaces for human rights defenders, and to protect the rights of minorities such as LGBTIQ plus people, among many other issues. I look forward to witnessing the continued positive impact that your work will keep uh, your work will keep having in Kenya. We are committed to play our part and to support the important work you are doing. I wish PBI and all the human rights defenders in the room great success going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for Mr. Fali. And now we come to our keynote speaker of the day. And I think most of you can guess who this is. Can you? Viva comrades, viva! Ah, can you guess who this is? Ah, you're not sure, no. You're not sure. Can you guess who this is? This side, they are not sure. I think there's another keynote speaker here. But uh, it's okay. Can you guess who is the keynote speaker? Yes. Okay. Before I officially invite the keynote speaker, I just want to read a very short profile of who this great man is. Viva comrades, viva. Viva. Busia Senator Okia Umtata, the public litigant, the people's lawyer, is widely recognized for his relentless advocacy for citizens' rights and his pivotal role in challenging governmental overwork within Kenya's legal framework. Despite not following the traditional path of legal education, Omtata's academic background in philosophy and theology did not stop his emergence as a prominent figure in legal circles. His notable achievement includes landmark victories in cases ranging from preventing government intrusion into citizens' privacy to curbing parliamentary excesses. Motiva motivated by prohibitive cost of legal representation, Omtata embarked on journey of self-education, mastering the intricates of legal proceedings. His legacy transcends legal boundaries, serving as a lawyer for all and emphasizing the transformative power of individual action in effective social change. Okio Mtata's name remains act in Kenya's history as a champion of people, a self-taught legal luminary whose impact resonates across corridors of power. Let's put our hands together as he comes. Let's put our hands together, Nanguvu. Viva, comrades, viva! Karibu sana. Wakenya mpo? Amjambo. Muko imara? Ama mnashituka? Amu banduki, eh? Aya. Na wana nyuso nyingi sana mbato naelewa na nashukuru. Tuko hapa. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm most grateful for the honor to be here today. I don't know what criteria was used. I think I, don't, I think I was the least deserving to be here. I was asked by Comrade Ombok. Up, eh? And I come and make a keynote speech. And I've come to make a a speech. But I didn't write my notes down because I belong here. This is my space and we can only expand it. So human rights <coughs> belong to human beings because they are human beings. It's because we are human beings that we have got human rights. And in every society you look at, a human being has tended to, to treat each other differently. In all societies, 
the right to an identity. You know what used to happen in our traditional societies when a child is born. The elaborate procedure that went, they went through giving a child an identity, naming a child. Today, you have people who are stateless, even in this country, who can't access IDs, who can't be anybody. So, this call to human rights is a very, very important call. And uh, standing here today, I'm happy that the German government, through the embassy, is on the forefront because the constitution of Germany and the constitution of Kenya share a lot, a lot in common. Maybe without saying it, we borrowed a lot from there. And the jurisprudence that has come out of the German courts on human, on human rights is very illuminating. And I think uh, no better embassy would be placed for the Kenyan situation to push advocacy on human rights. So, as I stand here, I stand here to acknowledge that because we are human beings, we have rights. We don't have rights because of what we are, of, one of what we own. We don't own rights because of the offices we occupy. We don't enjoy rights because of anything else, but because we are human beings. And because we are human beings, and our rights are universal, then we need to take the question of human rights very, very seriously. And it's a saddening affair that human rights for human beings also require a certain level of material well-being to be fully enjoyed. If you can't access a house, or you can't access shelter, you can't access food, you can't access these essential essentials, you can't access sanitation, then you have a big challenge with the human rights. And that's why then spaces like this must help us formulate policy or come up with policy frameworks that will then enable politicians come up with the structures that help organize society in a manner that it allows, at least it gives room to everybody to have a chance in life. Our society has a lot of challenges which you can press down to the fact that when the missionary came to our shores, they were concerned about saving souls, not very much about the bodies that contained those souls. When the settler came and wanted to establish a state to govern the territories, they seemed to have been very interested in uh, extraction of resources. And so they organized states that allowed them to dominate, oppress, and exploit. And so their idea of the state was not the idea that ended tribal wars in Europe. It was not, the, it was not modeled on the Westphalian idea of a state. We had all the ingredients except one. In the colonial state, there were no people. You had territory, you had security, you had no people. It was an open space that the settler could then run roughshod and, and they dominate, oppress, and exploit. Now, that state has not been totally dismantled. 
the color of the settler or the color of the oppressor may have changed, but not that state. And that's the challenge we have today, to make sure that the predatory state is destroyed. And how do you destroy it? You destroy it by making the people the center of the state. What do the people want? What, do they, what, do, what are the needs of the people and how do you address them? So when you come into a country like ours and you look at the budget, and for those of you who, who followed the last fight we ha I had with the state, with the government, over the budget for 2023, you would see where a lot of these problems are coming from. When you come across hospitals without medicine, you come across so many things that are not working. You come across universities that cannot impart knowledge, impart knowledge. You go down and see that if you looked at our budget, then you'll, you'll understand what's wrong with this country. You will understand what's wrong with this country. Right now, as we are speaking, I just received the news, maybe some of you have seen it, that uh, the commander of the Kenya Defense Forces has crashed in one of the helicopters. Now, what is the history of these helicopters? Those of you who have read this, followed the space in this country, what has been the history of these helicopters that came from Jordan? Were they new helicopters? Did we pay for new helicopters? Why were junk delivered? And why should somebody like the commander of the Kenya Defense Forces be riding in one of these death traps? That's where the problem of this country is. The problem of this country is in management. And the call upon us is to be, wake up and manage this country. And if you want to be developed, there, are no, there is no way to be developed but to imitate those who have been developed. What did they do? So the call upon us is to begin moving out of these spaces where we preach to the choir and get to the street and say we want our country back. The song we have sung on this stage this, this afternoon is the matching song I would like to see sung across the streets of Nairobi from Mombasa to Mon Mandera to Busia to wherever. Yes. When you sing it in these managed spaces, it ends here. And that's the tragedy of our struggle. The struggle in civil society feeds nowhere does not feed directly into the political processes of this country and therefore you are ignored. You are unable to, to threaten power and therefore power ignores you. But if you can threaten power, power will listen. Power will bend and do what you want to do. So my call today is that, that these spaces are incubators. But we cannot stay in an incubator forever. The civil society movement in this country has remained stuck in an incubator. Even a baby is put in an incubator, even from the mother's womb, it lives and goes. You have, have had very good friends, they have supported us, they have given us all we need, they have given us all the ideas, they end up here. I've never heard this song sung at a political rally. Mnataka mashamba yoni irudishwe. Mnataka hakizenu. Mnataka injeni rudishwe. I never hear those words. Instead, the political space is filled of platitudes that make no sense. But that's how it's going to be because nature abhors a vacuum. If you leave the political space as a vacuum, <laughs> the idiot will take it over. Remember the words of Plato. Though it's something like those who don't engage in politics end up gover being governed by those who, who are less than them. Something like that. 
So I would pray that these incubation spaces must find a way of informing the national narrative. You have so many good ideas. I've read those pamphlets. So many individuals, luminary individuals, doing a lot of good work. Why can these people become leaders? That can become an MCS. Why can't they? It's because we have not thought of organizing those among ourselves to become leaders. There is even something very bad in civil society. You think that politics is for the dirty people. When I decided to run to be senator for Busia, I was vilified. I was told, forget about when he has gone into politics, leave him. But politics is how things are done. You can't assign yourself a career to be on the margins, to be complaining. We must mainstream the issues that affect civil society. That's what the West has done. Look at their, narr their, 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 narr their, narr their political narratives. They are largely issues of human rights. In our country, the hu human rights are not a mainstream narrative. They are a narrative on the periphery. I doubt even if it, even if it makes it to the fireplace. So, this idea of saying that you will, you will be living in an incubator should die. We should move out. Right now we are having a struggle in this country for the progress of this country. And if you allow me to use a narrative of uh, an, allegory, an allegory of a prison, when I look at the traditional political classes, Raila Odinga, William Ruto, and et al., their fight is not to destroy the prison. Their fight is who becomes the chief warden. And the agenda, when you listen to their agenda, when they talk about their manifesto, they tell you, when you make me the chief warden, I will allow you more time in the sun. I'll fumigate the rooms, you'll not have bed bugs. I'll give you larger rations. So make me the chief warden. And they fight viciously about who becomes the chief warden. Some of us want to destroy the prison. The prison is not our business. Emancipation of the people is what we need to see happening. And that emancipation, the seeds of emancipation are the things you are pronouncing here. But you are pronouncing them in spaces where they should have left. They should germinate and be transplanted in the field. So I really pray that with the kind of knowledge we have, let us try to get our country back. Let us take over the political spaces. I'm a single voice, an independent voice. I did not join uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. I did not join uh, Azumio. They said, you want to make it? I said, well, I, was not, I don't have to make it. But I'll give people a choice. That's my purpose. And who got the highest votes in Busia? I, <laughs> I beat all of them, including the... So, let us find a way of identifying leaders from amongst ourselves who can stand up for something and who can liberate this country. But if you sit back, those who are worse than you will take over and they will rule you and they will make decisions that bind you. So I'm very happy for what I've heard here. When I read that pamphlet about the group, I saw a lot of good leaders who, if you put in a, in, a, in a county assembly, would be able to make a difference. If you put in parliament, they would make a difference. I am one voice, but I believe, I don't know, but I think I'm making a difference. Because in this game, it's not just numbers. Conviction. Conviction is what moves mountains in this space. The latest case I've filed, 21 other senators have joined me. Because they are seeing what we, should supposed be, we are supposed to be doing. And I'm very honored for that because it is changing the narrative.
to see that the issues I'm articulating and prosecuting are not the product of a madman, a madman's idle mind. There are issues that need to be addressed in this country, and these issues must be addressed. So my prayer to you is that this beautiful work that you have done, like the Christ says in the Gospels, no man lights a lamp and puts it under the bed or under a bushel. You have a very beautiful lamp in civil society. You have got issues here that need to come out. And I think if we think further, forget about politics wanting money. Money comes afterwards. If you really are organized. I had no money. I ran a pay against people with money. I had a microphone. I had a microphone and I spoke my mind and people listened. And they gave me votes. So let us look at this space here and say, how do we get this beautiful thing that you are doing here? Our friends from Germany, from wherever, can only help us. They can only plant the mustard seed. But we must water the tree. We must walk the walk. If we came up and said that Nairobi must be captured in the next elections, civil society leaders must capture Nairobi and run Nairobi, we can't be defeated. Unless you are, unless you are scared of nothing. You see? So I think we should think of this and work hard. Some of you are very well known people. I've seen my friend uh, Gacheke Kachichi here. Very well networked in this area. But he has lacked the form for formula to maybe expand his influence. And many of you, many of us have that. So let us, for heaven's sake, put our act together. Our brothers have helped us. Our sisters from the West have helped us. It's our time to get out of the incubator, learn how to crawl and walk, and check this country over. Because complaining will take us nowhere. We must mainstream these narratives. We must learn how to fight back. We must get our country back. And right now, when you go to the policy framework, you find that the country is becoming a basket case. And we may need to meet and discuss which is the best way to run this country, which is the best way for me, I believe that the prison must go. The question of allowing people to fight on about who becomes the chief warden must end. We must break down the prison, we must get the people work free, and we must keep give people emancipation, not liberation. We must restitute our people. Today I was listening to a speech by Malema. And he talked about one thing that uh, really touched me. We don't agree on everything he says, but he touched one thing that really affected me in terms of the question of security guards. Why should institutions not hire security guards directly? Why should an institution pay a businessman 15,000 shillings per guard only for that guard to be paid 4,500 shillings at the end of the month? And the businessman pockets 15,000 shillings. So this culture of cartels is a something Malema was addressing today in her speech and saying that these are among the things that are driving poverty. Because a few people come up, they call themselves businessmen, and they stand between you and your government. Malema was saying, when you elect a government, you go and you go to vote. You don't vote through a middleman. You vote directly. You end a contract with that government. Why should the government be encouraging this middleman to come up when it's delivering services? Why can't it deliver services directly? These are the kind of narratives that I would like us to engage in in these spaces 
and see how we can help ourselves get out of this problem. We live with these security people in their, in their homes. We know how they suffer. We know how they wake up. There's one I know who wakes up at around 4 every morning to begin working this place of work. He works until 6. He walks back. He gets his children are asleep. He just changes and begins working back. And when he works, the, the fellow who is employing him is earning about 20,000 shillings per guard. He is being paid 9,000 shillings for doing the work. Why can't that institution just employ this guy and pay him a living wage? These are the things we need to talk about so that we can talk about poverty in a way that we can give it solutions. You, have known, you know about these so-called uh, informal settlements. Why can they be made habitable? Why can't they be made habitable? Even if we don't even address the question of ownership, why can't they be made habitable by the government? So all these things can be done, and me, I'm very happy you honored me by inviting me here. I know that the struggle is long, but we are equipped for the struggle. And the final word, in our narratives, we stress one thing. We stress a lot about integrity. But when I go back to the Bible and I look at the story of David, King David, he was a multi-talented individual. King David had two very important things about him. He had integrity and he had skills. He had integrity, but he had skills. He could bring down Goliath with a sling. He had skills. So within civil society, how are we skilling ourselves? We are people of integrity. Do we have any programs within our civil society set up that skills us, that equips us to engage? So that could be another area of the narrative that we may want to look at. Skilling. And I would pray that our friends who are trying to help us from Europe and wherever, consider the question of skilling people, giving people skills. So that if they go even to become MCS, MPs, whatever, they walk into those spaces with skills that will enable them to deliver on the integrity, use their integrity to, to deliver on the convictions they carry. So let us try to work about skilling. That's one area I also find in civil society really lacking is the skilling. I have been offering my friends, I say now that we are in the Senate, and I say, I use we deliberately, not, it's not my seat, it's our seat. Come, let us use it. Bring motions, let us disturb, let us destabilize the system. Me, I'm there for conviction, I'm not there to make money. I'm there for conviction. Even when I, when I pack my small car, my demi, I pack again as a big Mercedes, some get offended and I like it. <laughs> what makes you think that a V8 defines me? It does not. I ride Matatus. My friend Ombok, we meet on Matatus. I do it. it doesn't stop me from being a senator when I stand up there and talk. Yes. So let us try to skill our people to be able to come into these spaces, come and make use of this seat that I have. And I promise you, Sibanduki, Kama mbaya, nimbaya. Kama mbaya, nimbaya. Lakini Sibanduki, na ngependa muje tuungane, tusukume gurudumu. So that this small space now we, that we have in the Senate, we should now hold there and expand. Yes. Use it like an anchor when climbing a mountain and pull ourselves up. I would like to see most of us come up and take over the majoritarian spaces. That's the only way our message will have traction in this country. We cannot be developing beautiful ideas and giving it to con men and crooks and cockroaches to implement. Yes. 
they will do what a cockroach does is to gather around a rotten tomato they will not walk the walk so please my plea is that those who are trying who are supporting us not trying sorry who are supporting us should find it among them inside themselves to see how they can go the extra mile by skilling our people even just in uh, small things like public speaking small things like being able to interrogate issues and budgets and what have you so that only when you go on a platform and you are talking you talk things that are close to the people so i think i've spoken for a very long time and uh, i pray that if i've uh, offended you i'll offend you more i promise <laughs> so i'll offend you more because people are dying in this country in a country where people cannot afford 50 shillings for this maramoja tablet for malaria you get some people using public funds to buy watches worth 30 million we're not going to allow that and we must work for a way of putting these people in jail during their lifetime yeah. there's been so much abuse of the resources of this country that unless we put some of these top people in jail this country will not move yes. we need shock therapy but we shall not do that with our integrity alone we must have skills like king david we must have those slings we must know how to send a sling that can bring down goliath are we together wa kenya mpo mtasimama imara kweli yeah but we don't become arrogant we stay humble but lethal and if we have got the tyranny of numbers let us equip ourselves to have a tyranny of brains and contain them i read beautiful posts on social media by you people and myself interrogating issues in a way that is so so refreshing but the bad thing with social media it makes you feel you have done it yet you have done nothing it's like shadow is like but shadow boxing it makes you feel you have done it then you have done nothing and i'm sure the likes of mboko before social media came around when you called for them in nairobi people would come out today you call for them and people post on social media and they feel they've done something about it so those beautiful things i'm seeing in social media should come and inform our policies and the society the opportunities are there please let us take our country back nobody else is going to do that for us our friends from the europe from europe from the west can only point the way out to us but we must walk it we must walk it and i don't see why we can't walk it if i look at i look around this room very many of you are young people i think the majority are youth under 35 sometimes you go in some meetings and you feel everybody around you is about to die <laughs> so you discuss things about buying coffins and things you have no interest in living but here you are people with more than 50 years in this country what kind of life do you want to live with that 50 years so please let us get up and do what we are supposed to do i see it in you let us take these beautiful songs out of halls to the streets let us influence the politics of this country let us take over the politics of this country and do the right thing and to our friends from europe we thank you very much 
for what you are doing is not that you have got too much is that you are sacrificing to try and assist and you are assisting so i'm most grateful for that and i pray that you also consider helping our people acquire skills skills that can help them engage in majoritarian spaces then when we fix the issues in this country even the, dollar, the little dollars you have that you are sacrificing to assist us can go and help somebody else we don't have to be on the receiving end every other day with those few, few remarks i say viva africa viva 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 viva, viva. thank you very much and may god bless us all ni shuja o kiawe ni shuja o kiawe tu ni shuja o kiawe ni shuja o kiawe tu ndio maana ndio maana Ndio maana Ndio maana Tumpigie makofi tena Thank you very much senior comrade I think you just for me you affirmed one thing Recently there were people from Busia of course our brothers and sisters from Busia who are saying you should focus more with Busia and then we thought oh we are losing okia now you know for the nation because for the longest time you've been representing all our voices but i think you have affirmed that we are still moving as one people however much you have a duty in busia viva comrades viva 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 comrades viva, viva. are you ready for an artistic expression yes. are you ready yes. remember and i know uh, we have nisherehe remember nisherehe sawa we are celebrating 10 years of peace brigade international so kidogo tu tukimaliza hapa get your dancing shoes and everything ready sawa did you bring your dancing shoes no we will give you some minutes to get them because the party is yet to start are you ready for an artistic ex expression put your hands together for the social justice traveling theater tupigie makofi wakija Huyo ndio mzaliti bwana. Huyo ni macho yake anakaa tu yokora anakaa tu ametupeli tu yeye ni mtu tu anakana. Afande mimi nakwambia Oziesa amenitukana hadi nimekasirika vibaya sana mimi. Mimi nakwambia sasa kwa hii mtaa, hii mtaa ndafanya kazi. Wanasema sifanyi kazi. Lazima kazi tu mimi ni nani? Mimi ndasafisha hii mtaa yote hapa sasa. Sasa ndio nakwambia hivi. Mtu pande yote. Hakuna. Sasa afande ndio ilikuwa na ama tuanze na hao vijana si ndio ah, wewe 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 simama hapo sasa wewe simama hapo nataka kukimbia eh nataka kukimbia si ndio uko na bio si ndio wewe nenda wewe nyamaza nyamaza kuja hapa kuja hapa eh simama kwenda eh nende mnaibia watu huko si ndio songa hapa songa hapa Eh. Sinyenye. Usigane. Usigane. Kapo. Kapo. Pumbafu. Unaongelesha na nyamaza. Ni nini? Ati. Sasa hii mambo gani umefanya sasa? Nini wewe? Unapita mtu risasi? Kwa nini vibaya? Mimi ndio ndio umepita hewa. Afande acha nikwambie. Hii vijana hawa ndio wanaibia watu huko. Kijana hii nini umeweka hapa? Toa. 
Simu, eh? Yaani unapiga mtu risasi wewe? Nyi ndio mnaipia watu huku, ndio? Unajeni atia? We. Unajeni yaani ile yaatia wewe? Afanda ibunya maza. Sikiza, sikiza. Ah, 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 sikiza. Sikiza. Sikiza basi. Haya. Mimi na wewe ndio tuko kazini, si ndio? Mimi na wewe ndio tuko kazini. Umepiga mtu risasi, kazi ikiharibika mimi pia. Ah, upana, wacha kupana. Sikiza. Sikiza. We, 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 kuja hapa. Wewe ni partner wangu, sawa? We next together. Kwa hivyo kile kitafanyika hapa ni mimi na wewe ndio tunajua. Hadi mwana funzi. Eh? We, ukinye iko ni kumaliza. Hapa ni kumaliza. Hospitali watatoa ni mimi. Madaktari wataonyesha ni mimi. Unataka nifuate, si ndio? Hiyo shida, hiyo shida unataka kuletea shida hapa. Ah, hapana, tufanye hivi. Tufanye hivi. I've done this many time, okay? Tufanye hivi kinye iko ni kumaliza eh. Wacha nikuonyeshe leta simu yako. Leta simu. Uko na simu? Eh, wacha nikushow. Kuja hapa. Nyendo, nyendo mnaibia watu kukuja hapa. Inu kuja. Kuja. Eh, kuja ni kuonyesha hospitali kwenye iko. Eh. Kuja. 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 Hivyo sasa. Ati mwanafunzi. Uzi mwanafunzi uwa shule uu. He? Yo 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 magoza si yangu. Uwe hapa ni ngoja. Ngoja kwanza ya. Ini university kwanza ya. Ya inje siya Kenya hii. Kenya hii kwa fande. Mimi na hindi utunajua sawa. Usijali. Nimepiga kijana picha. Ndiyo hii. Unaona? Mimi mambo yako. Ndiyo hii. Na ni mamu wakilea bunduki. Nimi ndiyo hii. Hivi si vitu. Na ikitipuka mimi siku hapo. Unasikia? Hapana. Aba, wewe fanya hivyo usijali. Ni mimi na wewe, ni sawa? Kenya iko. Shika hii simu. Haya. Shika hapa. Pigia OCS, mwambie tumefanya kazi. Ita Land Rover ibebe hiyo kimaiti. Are you willing to walk the hard road to freedom? The road to a social justice country. So are you willing to join us? The social justice traveling theater in this journey, the journey Tuangaze Afrika Lengo la ukombozi Alito aroo yake Tuangaze Afrika Lengo la ukombozi Lengo la ukombozi Welcome everyone It is yet another sad day We are commemorating the life of a brother A friend Martin Kamau Who was recently killed Ah Kabla ni endele sana. I would like to welcome maybe the family to say something. Na kama pia mama hezi kuangia. Maybe the sister can say something. Karibu. Habari zenyo. Martin was my only brother. And the only man we had in our family. With big dreams. Before his life was cut short. <laughs> All we are asking is the family of Martin is justice for my brother. Uh, we are very sorry. Poleni sana. That was very, very sad. Uh, maybe we can have our community organizer, Mzalendo. You can say something. More power to the people, more power. more power. More power to the people, more power. It is very sad that today we are gathered here to mourn one of us. We all know Martin was not a thief. Sisote tunajua Martin hakuwa muizi kwa hii community. But the rogue police in this community decided to take his life away. 
very young and ambitious kumaliza shule na ku graduate as a doctor but they decided to take his life away it's okay comrade but we will not remain silent in this community we will not remain silent to this rogue police in our community we will not remain silent as we watch our young boys disappear in this community we will not remain silent in cases of extrajudicial execution. We are going to stand up as a community and talk about them. We are going to call out all these rock polices. And we will not remain silent. And we shall not relent until justice for Martin is served. Justice for Martin, justice for Martin. Justice for Martin, justice for Martin. Justice for Martin. As you all know, our Twitter campaign has been going on for the past one week. And the hashtag has been end police extrajudicial executions. Yes. But now we are going to train the other one, which is hashtag justice for Martin. Justice, justice, for, Martin, Martin. justice for Martin, justice for Martin. Justice for Martin. Justice for Martin, justice for Martin. Justice for Martin. I would also like to invite all of you to the dialogue that is upcoming. It is going to be in one week's time. We are going to discuss all the issues that the police are doing in this community. We are going to call out all of them in that dialogue. I hope all of you are going to be available. Thank you very much. Viva! Uh, that was a very, very powerful speech from our community organizer here, Mzalendo. So we are going to head to where Martin was killed, and that is where we are going to do our candle lighting. Uh, starting with the family. Tula, mama, tula. Mos, 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 mama, mos, 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 mama, mos, 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 mama, mos, 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 mama, mos, 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 mama, mos, mos. Mos, mos, mama, mos, mos. Babes. Eh. 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 Where are you panicking? Simi yangu ilizima, babe. Na nilisau kukukol venye power niliona ina run out. Nasa hizi, it's already 10 in the night. With your condition, it's not supposed to be outside Mzalendo. But babe, I thought I told you that I'm going to Martin's vigil. And you agreed on it. Where we are working at Martin, that is Martin's community and Martin's family. That does not concern you anymore. But babe, we have had this conversation a thousand times. Why do we have to repeat it every now and then? Mimi nilikonga nimekubali. I had accepted all this. But right now, I cannot accept it with all these threats. Jana, jana, jana natokia kazi. They stop me when I am If you don't stop whatever this whole thing you are doing. What am I doing? Mtoto wetu. Mtoto wetu. Amu taki familia anymore. Babe. When you engage me, uli jua vizuri sana that I am an activist. Kwa nini sayu unakuwa shaking all these threats? After all, I told you, I don't work as an individual. I work with a center. I work with a community that is behind me. And act, I also told you, babe, that there are other international organizations. Ziko hapa kunipatia protection. Nataka uskize na uskize very well. Naenda bedroom. Na kama kunataka kunijoin bedroom, Unafaukuje na clear understanding, no kuwa na clear choice. It's either me or your so-called community. You decide that. Babe, babe, babe. Now what am I supposed to do? My husband, 
my baby, the community. God. Kazi inafanyika sasa. Eh, kazi iko sawa. Yes. Walisema tufanye kazi. Sikuizi tutaendelea tu kufanya. Hata ndio ile. Wewe wewe wewe, kuja hapa, kuja hapa na hiyo mauaji yako. Kuja. Kuja hapa wewe. Eh? Afande hizi ni ile kijana ya wale wale wa vijana wanaitwa nini? Suso. Kuja hapa wewe, kuja 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 kuja. Adu wanaitwa nani? watu wa nini wa ile human rights center iko pale juu hazio uh-huh. abando uh-huh. sasa nikuulize sehemu imefikisha wapi mambo afande si unajua kazi yetu uko kwenye harakati harakati document cases kidogo sasa document unajua kama mwizi hapana kijana yenye ndio mnajifanya masiaidi wa hii mtaa si ndio mnatuchunguza hapa si ndio enda chini kwanza unaongelesha nani vibaya wewe enda chini nasikwambia mara ya pili unasikia Utabeba kitu? Hakuna kitu niko nayo. Uko na hakika? Ah, si wewe unajua tu wapande kazi yetu. Sisi angalia vizuri. Nikipata? Hakuna kitu utanipata nayo. Wewe yeah. una hakika wewe? Ah, niko na hakika wapande. Hivi ni bangi hii? Ah, ah, ah. Eh, yeah, yeah. kijana, unapatikana bangi na unacheka, si ndio? Usiniekelee hiyo. Ndio maana nyole zimesimama hivi, si ndio? Kijana. Usiniekelee wapande hiyo. Hiyo ndio wewe. Sasa wewe nikuulize, mimi nimekuekelea bangi? Asiata, si mmeona. Afande Afande ame sawa enda chini unaongelesha nani enda chini pumbafu wewe Fungua macho angalia hapa Fungua macho mvuta bangi wewe Mimi niko nazo sikia mimi ndio niko nazo si ndio lakini wewe saa hii ndio utabeba unasikia Eh ni zake Kile ya kwanza plus hizi mbili ni ngapi Ziko tatu Ziko tatu Eh haya Wewe tuende wewe ndio unajifanya mjuaji wa mtaa si ndio Eh hey, utajua hii ndoto yako tunamalizia hapa wewe leo unalala ndani twende ni sawa fande sikatajike lakini katiba sinanipea kupiga simu sasa unajifanya kupiga simu ndapiga du simu moja kanja anataka kusema kwa res kwa res dini resist hapa si afande si hiyo ndio kufundisha adilini ana resist res eh afande sasa ingine enda soma bana pia twende unafanya afande achanganyikiwe si ndio twende utapiga simu kwa station twende utapiga simu mbele Unajifanya hapa mjuaji simu ta hata una credit twende enda huko Hana nayo wacha ikae Nini Achana nayo ikae Kwani mimi mimi sina life Nini Ah sina maisha Wacha niwaambie eh Hapana wacha niwaambie It's high time tujue vitu tuta prioritize kwanza Sawa mimi nimechoka na hizi threats na mimi nimeona by the way I'm still young bado hata sijamari Sawa community organizing is not my thing Wacha ikae Achana nayo huyo hapo anajua alikuwa anaingia nini akikuja in the first place ukijoin about human rights defending huko unajua we knew that we would receive these threats from the start ama kwa anajua alikuwa anajua hata niwaambie sawa nyinyi nyinyi mnaongeongea hivi si ndio wacha nikwambie ndoro sahi yako wapi ndoro alishi una hata ujui ndoro alishikwa comrades eh ndoro alishikwa na wacha comrades eh why are you making such noise akimtoa anawasikia kutoka huko what's the problem zalendo your people here want to quit Ati? after everything we have been through they want to quit atiku sababu amesikia njoroge has been arrested who is quitting me eh mzalendo acha nikwambie ukweli hata wewe uko na familia a whole political educator imagine you want to quit ah lakini hiyo bado acha nikwambie mzalendo mimi wacha nikwambie wewe hata wewe mwenyewe usiko na familia na to make matters worse mzalendo huyo hapa kid anakuja sawa so acha it's high time to prioritize vitu na ile hata ile pesa kidogo tuko nayo tufungue basi kazi hizi comrade next ni wewe comrade no you can't rally people to do that after all is this really the right time for us to quit is it really the right time for us to say enough is enough after all the cases tumefikisha kotini Zitaenda wapi? Mimi kwangu imefika. How are we going to get justice if wewe kama human rights defender unataka kukuit? With the help of all those organizations, you want all their works to go down the drain just like that. Comrades, we can't be quitting right now. After all, there's a mistake we all make as comrades. Mm. Do we really document all these threat cases? We should start documenting them. Yes, yes. we should start documenting this case. Mm. Have you documented your case? We should start documenting these cases so that you can seek help from these international exactly. organizations. Hey. And uh, Mzalendo, what about Comrade Njoroge? 
Yes. Abu. The fact that he has been arrested, eh? Yes, Comrade Jorge was arrested yesterday. Hey, na kumenda aje. Jota yondi inafanya mimi na wana apana. Tunajua vizuri, hey, Comrade Jorge haku wanauza bangi. Hey, haku wana bangi. Plus, alikuwa nga na kampeni nendelea on ya drug and substance abuse. Ata yeah, comrades, yeah. you're all aware of all these malicious charges that us as comrades, huwa tunaikelewa na wama polisi. We all know Comrade Jorge doesn't even smoke bang. Yeah, but anyway, we have reached out to different organizations and wana deal na yoke si anjoro. Maybe by tomorrow or today in the evening, Joroge will be out. Ah, so there is no need of worrying. Ah, you need to understand. Juu sasa tamu ni kikai vinione. Basi kama kuna unity flani, ni vuta ni wajoin tena. Juu koko kando ni danga vuna skia si yeye ilienda na wewe. Kwa kando ni kumbred. You can't work alone. Uh -huh. Anyway, I have good news. The dialogue I told you at oh, at Martin's Palace, meeting. Vigil. Yes. Oh, okay. It has gone through. We are going to be having a dialogue with Peace Brigade International. They are going to help us in building a good rapport with the stations around us. <laughs> So, na kama tunaipanga si basi tunaweza anza wa normal yeah. meeting tunaweza start with our normal meeting no problem so we go to our meeting hey. yeah. na hii mambo mambo ya kuhang boot we kila siku usini judge hmm? wewe na wapi unanikanyagia kiatu eh kweni pia wewe unataka kuni <laughs> what is wrong with you comrade na ku threat Nilifuwa jana tafadhali Ija kauka Apana sa I'm sorry sa Apana sa Yes sa Yes sir. Are we together? Yes sir. Don't go out there shooting innocent people. Staki jina station ya ribiwe. Sawa sawa? Yes sir. Umenisikiza vizuri? Yes sir. Akwapi mwezako? Na yule kijana mwini mwachilia kwanza? Ebu, ita mwini mwezako? Bada! Afande! Wewe, kuja hapa jabe? Kuja hapa? Wewe, unajua kazi yako? Yes sir, no sir. Eh? Wada ya ule kijana mwini mwacha? Yes sir. Apana? Bada wa kundani? No sir, yes sir. Wewe, kazi gani? Aujamwambia venye kazi na wewe nitakupiga transfer. Ni kuandika tu barua na uende, sawa sawa? I'm sorry sir. Let me tell you something. Uh, on Saturday uh, 10 a.m. 
we have a dialogue sawa sawa tutakuwa tunaenda pale kwa ofisi ya social justice center sawa sawa yes, we have a dialogue there utaenda na mimi in the meantime make sure that everything is in place no mistakes sawa sawa see you tomorrow thank you sir Jaber sasa wewe u Jaber More power to the people, more power. More power to the people, more power. I'd like to thank all of you for adhering to our call in today's dialogue. It has really been a very fruitful day. We have really had engaging conversation and very progressive ones. Uh, at this moment, I'd like to call one of my comrades to give us a vote of thanks. Yes. Asante uh, sana, comrade. Viva wananchi viva. Viva wananchi viva. Viva wananchi viva. Tekeleza katiba tekeleza. Ah, safi sana. Ah, mimi ningependa kuwashukuru sana first of all uh, the community kwa sababu we are inge up and bila nyinyi, si ndio? Eh, ni vizuri sana to me take part in these fruitful uh, conversations. Uh, na tu wao yes. Uh, thank you for always showing up. Mjua wetu kikupigia ujawe kosa kukuja, unakujanga, si ndio? Ah, mzuri sana. Ah, and to our partners, uh, PBI tunashukuru sana and we hope that uh, tutaendelea kufana before si ndio kwa hiyo kupartner tie kufanya zaidi eh we make sure that eh tuna work pamoja na wananchi eh comrade power asante sana asante sana bonus yes na asante sana thanks for making your office public for us we are going to be visiting now and then and finally i like to invite one of our partners who is peace brigade international atuambie jambo before we end up this dialogue Karibu Madam Masi. Uh, asante, asante sana eh, comrade Mzalendo. So uh, asante ni kwa wengine wote ambao mmeweza kuhudhuria huu mkutano wa leo. So as a Peace Brigade International we are very uh, honored to have facilitated this uh, conversation between uh, the stakeholders which is the police and the community. And uh, as we have seen there are less confrontational ways on how we can be able to handle our issues at the community level, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, as Peace Brigade we promise our solidarity to the grassroots people as we continue to envision a courageous, compassionate, and uh, collaborative ways on how we can uh, advocate for social justice. And uh, as I finish, I would like to invite all of you to PBI Kenya 10th anniversary. It has been a journey of courage indeed. Thank you. Tuta songa kwa mapinduzi. Tukombo e Kenya na 190 wote Social justice to pay uwezo Tukombo e Kenya na 190 wote Luis Liki tumefika kwa siya sanzuri Kwa siya sanzuri Tutasonga kwa siya sanzuri Tukomboe i Kenya na wananchi wote Social justice to pay uwezo Tukomboe i Kenya na wananchi wote Minus, to go minus, to go now to mind us. 
Wanaishi tuna mind Mbona walafi watu ongoza Wana tutawala Tuwame tugawanya Politics is not what you see inside a ballot box Politics is how underperforming leaders use the ballot box to win the election Our corrupt leaders won't face jail time But the free airtime bonus can get a blogger arrested Mr. Mr. Minister Stealing money to build five stars Could he be a star and build a public cancer facility? Tumechoka kuibiwa, tumechoka kuingizwa, tumechoka Kupewa ahadi Kunyimwa miradi Hello Thank you, DJ. Let's give them another hearty clap. And I will ask uh, the team to assist me with another microphone, please. And I want to take this time now to invite three very powerful human rights defenders that one are featured in the book that we will be launching today, but also are featured in the exhibition that is out there. So I will be calling them one by one, and uh, let us really appreciate them as they come. I will start with Comrade Grace Lolim. Tumpigia makofi akija. Tumpigia makofi mbaka afike. The next comrade that I will be inviting is Rehema Roda Iha. Tumpigia makofi akija. And the last... Comrade that I will be inviting is Jacinta Agunja. Tumpigie makofi akiza. Tuapigie makofi vizuri. Ama mmechoka. Ebu kwanza tuamke ni kidogo. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Tuapigie makofi tukiwa tumesumama. Very good. We can sit. Viva comrades, viva. So, as you see, these are comrades that one are featured. Their stories are featured... Uh, in the book that we will be launching, but also uh, a part of the exhibition that is out there. And if you are keen, they were also part of the, uh, the short documentary that we saw. Because of time, of course, and I know we will have more time when we will be having our cocktail, to talk to them, to know their stories further, I will request from them, one at a time, to just introduce themselves, where they come from, and also the work they do. Uh, so that we know them and we will have a very sh short uh, session to know more of their work. Then we will head to the other session. So I will start with uh, Comrade Grace Lolim. Karibu. Uh, viva Comrade Viva. Viva Comrade Viva. viva. Yes, my name is Grace Lolim, a women human rights defender from Isiolo County. I advocate for a progressive and inclusive society where indigenous women enjoy health rights, justice, peace, and security. And I also advocate for gender equality. Thank you very much. Tumpigie Makofi. Karibu, comrade. Viva, comrades, viva. Viva. Mina Rehema, Roda Iha. I'm from Kilifi. Uh, I work with Kwacha Africa as a field officer. Now, I also advocate for women uh, reproductive uh, health and rights. Malindi and Magarini. Thank you. Asante sana. Tumpigie makofi. Karibu. Viva comrades, viva. Viva. My name is Jacinta Agunja. I come from Madare, from a movement called Coalition for Grassroots Human Rights Defenders Kenya. I'm a finance person, but I'm also a feminist and an activist. I advocate for human rights for all because we don't choose human rights. It's universal. Tumpigia Makofi. Women on the front line. Liberate, celebrate. Women on the front line. Organize, educate, liberate, celebrate. Uh, uh, our women are mtaki wa kwa front line. Men on the front line. Ah, ooh, ooh. Mumekataya men kabisa. Women on the front line. Very good. Now that is some energy. 
I will start with uh, Grace Lolim. So I want, to, I want you to share an experience where you had a very challenging uh, experience as a woman, uh, HRD, but also with the issue of banditry in Isiolo that I know you are in the center of. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, I come from Isiolo County. Uh, I come from a pastoralist community where banditry is normalized. So uh, the challenging moments is one time uh, bandits killed a 70-year-old man who was also a widow. And 100 heads of animals were taken, especially the goats. They were taken, 100. Uh, the man was killed, and the police went uh, to look for the animals. Uh, they got the, the perpetrators, six of them, and uh, recovered 36 goats. Uh, they, these three, six people were taken to court, and because of uh, maybe Northern Kenya and the legal system, they were, they were just released that the, there is no evidence that they were the ones who killed the man. And so for me, I had to advocate for alternative justice access because that was not the first case which has been uh, taken out of court and uh, dismissed. I advocated for alternative justice access because I knew that uh, I come from the same community that uh, the perpetrators came. I was also the only lady in the peace committee, so I was torn between the community and also the human right to work. So the women, uh, the women from that community came, demonstrated that they wanted justice because they have not seen justice in court and they wanted justice for the, the person who was killed. Remember the man who was killed had five uh, kids. One of them was in Form 4. He was the only breadwinner because I said he was widowed. So I started with another lady. We talked with women and we told them it is not late. Justice will be prevailed and we have to push it. Because I was in the peace, uh, sitting in the peace committee, I had also to convince uh, the security team that there is need for dialogue. There is need for the two communities to come together because this is now the fire which has already been lit and it will all go to other com five major communities in Isiolo because other communities will now come and support the other communities. So there will never be justice. Uh, we established the Council of Elders. There was no Council of Elders in Isiolo who could sit uh, to dialogue. Uh, I did that because I, was expo I go went to an exposure in Rwanda and where I was also uh, going through what the, Rwandis, the Rwanda country was going through. And when I was there, I felt whatever was, I was narrated there is happening in Isiolo. So I thought of if I can replicate what I've seen there, then I think Isiolo could be uh, in another step of peace. So we brought the elders together. Uh, we also contacted the then politician who was there, and we told them that there is need for a dialogue so that we can uh, terminate all those things so that people can live in harmony. So the elders sat, we have the declaration, the Modogashi declaration, which we usually use as, as Northern Kenya. So for the man who was killed, uh, the declaration states that if a man was killed, uh, there was need for him to be paid 100 out of animals. Hundred. It doesn't matter if it is a goat, a donkey, but hundred. Then, um, also the community, the elders, because they had a dialogue, they discussed the issues, they agreed that it has happened, we cannot reverse, but what do we need to do? It is only to come together and think of how we can appreciate, we can just say sorry to the other community, then appreciate that the process will have a fruitful um, deliberations, and then, uh, maybe have a, a, something like a win-win solution. So the elders agreed that the, the Turkana elders who are there, because I come from the Turkana community and the Turkana community are the ones who did to the Somali community the same. So they agreed to uh, give 30,000 shillings for, uh, that day uh, for, the, the, for, for the children to be catered for. Then the MP who was there, uh, say he promised to pay all the school fees for the girl who was in Form 4 and also promised that through CDF he will pay uh, for the other four kids. So that is what we did and from that time uh, we saw that 
it was good which was been that but for me when I was seeing these women coming, I was even in another meeting, peace meeting. When they came, they were shouting, there is no peace. There is no peace. If this is what has been happening to us, there is no peace. Grace, you are sitting there. You are doing nothing. And uh, the, the, the lady was, remember, even the, 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 the wife of this man was just killed when he was uh, <coughs> taking care of the animals again. So it is the same uh, process the, man, the woman was killed. So that one, I was burned down. I was thinking of, what can I do? Can I leave the peace committee and leave everything? But later, I got courage that because these men also have uh, confidence in me, I have to work for this, and I work to work for the cause. And that is the time I also realized that I am a human rights defender. Thank you very much. To begin, Makofi. Uh, the next question will go to Rema. Uh, as a women human rights defender, I would want you to share with us uh, how you navigate issues of security uh, in Kilifi. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jelvan, for that question. Um, as a human rights defender, I normally use um, <coughs> spreading, spreading risk. I normally use spreading risk in two ways. That is, I rather involve others, or I do indirect advocacy. Indirect advocacy, I'm the one, I'm in the field, so I gauge others on a kwambele, wakifanya iyo, iyo, iyo kazi. For example, it's a case about na fatalia kwa koti. So how wana kwambele, lakini mimi niko kwa ground, nikiwa ni na feed with information. Then katika... Um, to involve others, I don't work in isolation. I involve when gine ili to lose the, the focus. Yeah, will be an target. So that ile focus haita kuja kwangu pekiake, but it ended to other to other people. And I also do some <coughs> backup for my any information that is relevant or important to me. I only share to anyone who deserves that information. I don't share it to uh, Ovio Ovio. I share it to someone, Ambena Jua, he deserves to have that information. And I also, uh, uh, sometimes we, we, we go to, to cybers. So, to get to the cyber, we sometimes see the information Ambena Jua, we need to So, we need to make sure we have footer nimeweka kwa trust at least iwe haitaonekana then katika mambo na kuwa ku make sure kwamba niko katika security in case ninaenda mahali ama nina na intend kwenda mahali i sometimes do some background information i get some background information about that place ambapo ninaenda so as nijeke rada nikijua hiyo area iko vipi alafu pia katika hali hiyo hiyo pia i normally share with my colleagues, ama with my close uh, relative, kwa anywhere ambo mimi nitakuwa. I don't, ani siendi tu mahali ovyo ovyo ikiwa watu, maybe my colleagues, ama my family members hawajui. Nikiwa niko mahali, my close family and my colleagues, they know kwa mba mimi niko wapo mahali. So that is the only way, ama the, the few techniques ambazo wanazitumia kujieka katika safeguarding. Thank you. Asante sana. Uh, the next question is Kwayako Jacinta. Basically, as a woman human rights defender, the question is how does it affect your mental health and how do you deal with uh, such a situation? Okay, mental health. Okay, being a women human rights defender is not easy because the work you do, the family you have, you have close people who can be attacked. It's not easy. But for the mental health, one, I have a very supportive team. That's one. Another thing I do, we go for psychosocial with PBI. And what we do in Madare, where I come from, in the organization where I come from, the Coalition for Grassroots Human Rights Defenders Kenya, we have a safe space for women to talk about their issues. Because we don't judge people based on either tribe, 
color or ethnicity or sex. So that's a safe space you can talk about everything and you get a shoulder to lean on. We have already created our own space where you can talk about anything without being judged and getting the support you need. Yeah, that's how I deal with it. Uh, thank you very much. Maybe I will just also want to ask you all one question because all of us here are sitting and celebrating the decade that has been. But of course, we are also looking at the, the decade that is coming. What would you want to see uh, Peace Brigade uh, International uh, do for you or do for the work that you do with your community? I will start with you again, Grace. Yeah, for me, I will ask the Brigade uh, PBI to protect us because we are the frontliners within the community. We are sometimes torn between the community and the security team. So sometimes you just you are just left alone. But if there is somebody who can hold your hand, who can who, whenever maybe you are taken uh, to court, is uh, that person is there to support you on legal matters? It will be good and also give psychosocial support because the work we are doing uh, sometimes cost our peace. Thank you. Now, Emma. Okay. To me, one, we have two things. We have link. We have link and network. Network is my part I'll play with, but there's another part of linking. So I'll ask PBI to link us with other uh, human rights defenders. That's one. Two, we, if we can get a training on uh, digital security, that will also help us. Uh, it, it will help us because currently we have issues on phone tracking, we have issue on cyber crime. So I believe when we get that training on digital, uh, digital security, it will help us. Thank you. Asante sana. Now Jacinta. Okay, venue in Zangwa Mesema, links, networks, and to get the links for the unrestricted funds. Because there is work that women human rights we do, that sometimes we don't have receipts. But when you have restricted funds, it makes harder to do those work. That for me, I'll say to be linked to the funder who, are, who has restricted funds. Asante sana, thank you very much. To apigie makofi. But as we wrap it up, I just want to ask if there's any particular questions and I will limit this to three only from the audience to any of them, Ama, to all of them. Is there any question or a contribution from the audience? Ah, they were very clear. Eh? Viva, comrades, viva. There is a hand back there. Uh, would you get them a mic, please? Back there. Uh. Far right. Anyone else as they get the mic? Okay, it's one. Viva, comrades, viva. viva. Uh, thank you so much. My name is editor at the Amboche. I come from Kibera. I'm a feminist witch. And uh, I don't have much to say, but I just want to say thank you so much for the work that you are doing in your communities because we need to stand um, and defend human rights. I know as a woman human rights defender, all the time we remind our communities that we are also human beings. So asante ni sana kwa kazi nzuri mnafanya na tuendelee hivyo hivyo tusibanduke. Hata kama tunapata hizo challenges zenye tunapata. Na wapenda sana. Thank you. Asante. Asante sana. There's a hand here. I think in your comrade Rachel. Yes. Comrade Power. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm a colleague of Jacinta and also Grace and many comrades. Uh, one would like, mine is comment. Uh, congratulations to PBI and the team of activists that have been able to contribute to this amazing journey. Uh, but my comment lies, I'm happy to see the German embassy. I hope they are also represented. There's a program we did with PBI around accessibility for visas for human rights defender and women human rights defender. I just hope also for the partners that are involved here would check on how to make it more effective 
because of the solidarity that is basically global. Uh, and for many experience of women in married defense, it's hard to get a visa, especially if you are single. Ooh. Most of us are victim of this. So if there's a level now, even diplomatic missions can be able to have this conversation with PBI and partners to see on how to improve on that. Not that we run from our country because some of this exile we go as refugee, quote unquote, because of the work we do. And it's usually very hard to leave our family, our loved one behind. Then the other one on funding, I agree with Jacinta also and the co colleagues. Activism work needs unrestricted funding or co funding support. And that is the language as HRD with where we are, based on also what Comrade Omtata said, we need to push this. It's unconventional work that needs unconventional resources. And that's why it's important this kind of partnership where also, and even accompaniment that Viri and the colleagues does is very important. So that's all Anna I wanted to highlight, but I'm so happy also to see women in front. We're also shifting the narrative, eh? It's women HRD. Big up, bravo. Thank you. Asante Sana. Any other? There's a hand here. This will be the last one, eh? Thank you, comrades. I'm speaking Swahili. Mimi naito Jacqueline waja nifinduke. Mimi naito Jacqueline kwa moka matoke from Mukuru as a human woman light defender. Waja niangalia mbele sasa. Mimi naunga mukono chesinta na upande wanya ameongea juu ya mental health. Upande wa mental health naomba PPI head and I call it a head office. What we care, my fools, what I need to me, you can To your mental health. The other two fools are ID. To say, dear, when they do, they don't know how to manage, mamba, your mental depression, and to manage stress. Watch your knee, watch your pussy, baby, your massage. Nice, I'm going back to you. Thank you. Santi Komboka. Asante sana. I hope at Ujafungia your very good points. I just want to take this chance again to appreciate and celebrate these comrades that have come a long way in the work that they are doing. And of course, because of time, we could not really uh, do much and speak deeply to what they are doing. So I'll just request you to really appreciate their work. To Apigia Makofi. Asante. Viva comrades viva. Viva, viva comrades viva. Hiyo ni mvua imekuja. Baraka eh. Imesikia maombi yenu. So I want to take this chance to welcome comrade from PBI, comrade Florence, who will be taking us through the next session. Tumpigie makofi akija. Tumpigie makofi vizuri ama hata kuja. Na bado tuko minus. Karibu sana Florence. Tukuna watu flani, hawa tu mind us. Una inchi tu na mind, bona walafi watu ngo. Ah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, our comrades, uh, friends, and colleagues, good evening. Yeah, we've come to the final part of the program today. And I thank you so much for staying that long and coming to celebrate with us uh, PBI's 10th birthday or anniversary. Uh, as we all know, an organization uh, does not grow without its people. So. Even as uh, PBI has grown, we have uh, people who are very closely working with us that have also grown. And today, we've just decided instead of celebrating the organization only, we also celebrate this uh, particular group that has walked a journey from 2013 up to present. Um, so uh, since 2013, uh, I would say uh, our women human rights defenders 
are not the way they joined. A lot has happened, a lot of transformation in terms of their capacity, in terms of their networks, in terms of their mental health, and all that. Uh, when in 2022, they decided to now expand the space and also take up a new role, and now they are uh, becoming, they are mentoring uh, a new cohort. As you've heard, we have a cohort from Kilifi. So they are mentoring this cohort uh, as they also learn from them because the, the project is uh, basically about learning from each other and uh, becoming more effective at our work. So uh, the book, while you are coming in, you received uh, a pack that contains a book uh, that is titled Stories of Strength, WHRDs Paving the Way. Uh, the title of this book was crafted by the HRDs themselves and also the stories they are in is uh, the real life stories of these women human rights defenders. This is because it's them who wrote their stories. Yes, we know them, we've been with them, but uh, we decided uh, to hear their stories from the first perspective. So when you read the story, just internalize and imagine it's them sharing the story to you. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about what is in the book, because if I do that, then people will not read. They'll just peruse the pictures and stop there. But um, outside there, there are also uh, photos or portraits of these uh, women human rights defenders, and they are in here. So I urge you, even during the cocktail, other than just reading the stories from the book, I believe it has more impact when you hear it from them, especially because you can even see their facial expression, their body language, and also considering with a the cocktail, they'll have more stories to tell. <laughs> okay, as we flip the pages, we will discover moments of uh, inspiration, uh, perseverance, resilience, and the joy that has shaped this journey. Um, one thing we need to know is uh, we've not only chosen on what has been positive, but we've also uh, decided to learn on the challenges that we have experienced as uh, WHRDs. So, uh, as I come to a conclusion, I'll just urge each and every one of us to celebrate with us and also relieve the highs and learn from the challenges. So I think that's that. And uh, so <laughs> uh, one of the most significant uh, thing that you'll pick from the book is that they have built their capacity in uh, various areas of training and uh, for the last uh, two years, they had identified some topics that they were trained on. And uh, I wish to also take this opportunity to uh, give them their certificates uh, so that they also feel celebrated together with PBI. So I will call upon uh, our country coordinator, Alberto Fight to come and help me with, with uh, issue this certificate. Okay, these certificates are not in any order, so they are just uh, random names. Uh, but the certificate is a certificate of completion this is to certify that uh, so-and-so has successfully accomplished and demonstrated proficiency in the following trainings facilitated by Peace Brigades International Kenya as part of the Women Human Rights Defenders Toolkit Project. So the topics are monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning, 
We have organization development and system strengthening, ODSS, that a lot of uh, WHRDs have said is making, uh, adding a lot of value to their organizations. Uh, we have resource mobilization and proposal development. Uh, we have network formation, management, and sustainability. So I'll just call the names and then Alberto will hand over the certificates to the owners. So we have Ibrahim Suleiman Hassan. We have we have Christopher. Please, please uh, Junior, you can remain on stage. We have uh, Christopher Omoke Onduso. Lillian Awor Onyango. Where's Christopher? <laughs> Uh, Francis Sakwa. Jacinta Agunja. Victor Owar. Victor Ward. Grace Papa. Lukia Godana. Cavere Beatrice. Gertrude Iminza. <laughs> Papa, you remain on stage. <laughs> Judy Dadiambo Chie. Asha Ali Hussein. I didn't see her. Catherine Wangoi. We have editor. Yeah, so congratulations, uh, cohort one of uh, Toolkit organizers. And uh, just as we close this and we launch uh, our photo book, uh, I'll just leave you with this. Uh, when the spider webs uh, unite, they can tie up a lion. You can imagine the size of a lion and uh, the strength that's associated with a lion. So with us, with this team, we believe in working with others 
And so in that spirit of uh, collective struggle, we are going to invite some people here on stage to help us launch our photo book. So uh, we request Senator Umtata to kindly come up to the stage. He's our keynote speaker today. We request Naomi Barasa, our board chair. We request Olal, the convener of Social Justice Center. We don't work alone. We work very closely with other HRDs. Uh, we are requesting team, our partner from uh, CPS GIZ, and Patricia Loco. So, uh, the people who are responsible for the pyrons and the cutting, I think, should be here with us because we are now launching the photo book. As apologies, we cannot move it, so we will have to like uh, do it from this side. Eh? Jacinta, na Patricia, mneza kata na Patricia. Makasi ngapi? Moja. Lakini Okay. Ah, uh, we are about to launch our photo book. I hope the DJ is ready. So you can come closer this side. We are going to use one side because now this thing cannot move. Uh, I hope the DJ is ready. Uh, okay. Now, as we launch our photo. Five, four, three, two, one. celebration uh, we are going to cut the cake and as they uh, I think uh, people can go down and maybe we have a few people left thank you thank you to yours you can some of you can get down or you move backwards Musonge, Nyuma, Keki Katwe Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
OK. Uh, OK, OK, we have uh, time to take more photos outside and to sing and dance. So now, uh, this is the last thing we are doing. And then Alberto can give a vote of thanks. We have Lillian and Mama Asha leading the cake cutting session. So and then and then the cakes will be passed around. Because we can't all come here to have it. And in the meantime, maybe Alberto. <laughs> yeah, in the meantime, as they cut the cake and uh, get the plates to serve us, you can uh, close for us. Give us closing remarks. Asanteni sana, sana, sana. Kila mtu mikuja leo. Tumefurai sana kweli. And as we have said, this is uh, our journey. And I hope that you felt the same as I did. Because uh, as uh, Florence said, uh, as without you, we wouldn't exist, basically. Simple as that. So we are here to work together. We are here to continue together. And I don't want to talk too much, because now I think that we have listened to everything that was there to be listened. Uh, I think enjoy the cake, enjoy the cocktail, enjoying the buffet outside, and uh, socialize and have fun. And I see you in 10 years' time, inshallah.